Well, first of all, uh, Professor Leister and Dr. Arbe, uh, welcome again to this uh, to this interview. We have done this uh, earlier this year, but uh, uh, maybe not everybody has seen that particular interview. So um, that was on March um, 19, I believe. But maybe as a short introduction for those who have not followed and participated in that interview, could you give a very short, um, say, um, presentation of yourself? So, Aslian. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the invitation and the opportunity to discuss our latest publication today. Uh, my name is Aslihan Erbay. I'm a medical doctor at the Charité University Medicine Berlin, doing clinical research in interventional cardiology and working in the research group of Professor Leisner, who's also with us today. Yeah, my name is Professor Leistner. I'm heading the Department of Interventional Cardiology at the Charité University Hospital in Berlin. I'm an interventional cardiologist and working a long time and with a large scientific interest in topics as intracoronary imaging, coronary physiology as well as, and I think this is the future in precision PCI. Yeah, well, thank you so much. and. Uh, as we have also mentioned earlier this year, so both of you have, have an enormous um, experience in the QFR. I mean, that is tremendous. If you, we discussed that earlier, the numbers that also uh, uh, Asleon has analyzed is enormous. And that is also, I think, uh, that pays out itself with this particular new publication that, that you have recently, um, say, published. And um, so that was, and that is why we are here. It was published in Circulation Intervention, and I read the title. It was the Prognostic Impact of Pan-Coronary QFR Assessment in Patients Undergoing PCI for Acute Coronary Syndromes. And um, I mean, this was, uh, I found it an amazing publication. And uh, so we will talk about that. And could you maybe um, uh, summarize the, the results of that publication? Yes, thank you for the introduction. Um, patients with ACS represent a high risk group for cardiovascular events that can occur in either the site of culprit or non-culprit lesions. Knowing that ACS patients with FFR-guided complete revascularization have improved clinical outcome, we addressed for the first time the prognostic role of angiography-based pan-coronary QFR assessment in a total of 792 patients uh, with ACS. Therefore, we performed QFR analysis of 792 post-PCI culprit vessels and 1,231 non-culprit vessels. The primary endpoint was defined as composite endpoint MACE, consisting of all-cause mortality, non-fatal myocardial infarction, and ischemia-driven coronary revascularization within two years after ACS. MACE occurred in our patient population in 99 cases, which corresponds to 12.5% and was mainly driven by unplanned coronary revascularization. And based on the descriptive results, we calculated the study-specific cutoff values for QFR in the detection of MACE, resulting in 0.89 for post-PCI culprit vessels and 0.85 for non-culprit vessels. And the presence of post-PCI culprit vessels, or at least one non-culprit vessel below the study-specific cutoff value, emerged as highly significant predictor for MACE uh, within two years after ACS. So we can yeah. conclude that our study for the first time demonstrated the prognostic implications of a pan-coronary angiography-based functional lesion assessment and our approach serves to ensure that patients at increased risk are identified and receive more closely medical care with adapted drug therapy and individualized revascularization strategies after primary PCI. Yes, and it's indeed, as you, as you mentioned already, and it's also clearly uh, written in the publication, this is really, um, say, the, the first time that you that it is demonstrated the prognostic implications of pan-coronary lesion assessment in patients with ACS. 
And it's really, um, she mentioned already, a really large study. Um, and, and it's also, uh, it's very nice for that, for the, um, the culprit lesion, you'll find exactly the same threshold as uh, the study that uh, was carried out by Professor Campos in the Hawkeye study, and also Professor Sarau's uh, earlier published results that was at the level of 0.91. You, you found the same as uh, Professor Campos, uh, 0.89. Um, so I, I think that that is very nice and that is very, very con uh, consistent in, in that sense. And um, that, that consistency, is that to be expected where the, the patient population is similar? Um, so you can, can you say that now the value of in between 0.89 or 0.91, is that now uh, clearly established as a threshold for um, a well-documented threshold? Would you agree with that for the... Um, the culprit lesions? Yes, um, I can agree that these results are to be expected in similar populations based on the mentioned studies. In the Hawkeye trial, a prospective multicenter trial, there are about 600 patients investigated with stable angina and NSCE, ACS, and found out the cutoff value of 0 0.89. In our trial, we can underline this calculated cutoff value in a very large population of patients with ACS as well. And the study of Professor Zeroes with more than 750 patients and uh, nearly a thousand vessels analyzed uh, would also support these results. So overall, a very large number of patients were studied and clinical outcome was evaluated. Um, and this cut-off value for QFR agree also with the cut-off value for invisibly assessed FFR. So in total, I think there is no need for further multi-center trials to answer this specific question. Yeah, no, yeah, fantastic that, uh, that these different studies all come out at the same value. I mean, that is very, very consistent and now, um, yeah, should be a, a well-accepted threshold. And you found in this study for the non culprit lesions a threshold of 0.85, and that is for no culprit lesions in ACS patients. So why why is this different from yeah, the normal value of uh, the threshold of 0.8 for um, uh, say coronary physiology? Why why is that that difference? How do we explain that? Yes, in our study, we calculated a study-specific cutoff value, including analysis um, for lesions, for severe lesions, um, as well as coronary lesions less than 50%. And these result in higher QFR values. Um, so these results um, ha may have an impact on the determination of the optimal threshold. But to understand the impact of different factors, such as study-specific versus established QFR value, um, or excluded vessels, the individual event types, and so on, we performed some sensitivity analysis during the review process. And all these analyses resulted um, in support of QFR as valuable tool to detect relevant coronary lesions, flow limitations. A recalculation um, of MACE, the occurrence of MACE with the established cutoff value of 0.80 has no impact to our results. So we, we can conclude from our study in ACS patients that um, vessels in vessels above um, with QFR above 0.85, we can safely rule out a relevant flow limitation. And in other patients, um, we should have more cautious, we should, they should receive more closely medical care. Okay, yeah. Okay, that, that, that sounds, sounds uh, very valuable. Um, as you mentioned also in your paper, uh, there are some limitations. Uh, every, every paper has a limitation or every study. So what can you describe these in a little further depth? Yes, of course, there are some limitations of our work that must be discussed. Uh, and um, first of all, we have an observational single center design with offline QFR analysis in the core lab setting. And about 20% of screened ACS patients had to be excluded due to angiographic criteria. 
I think an online assessment of QFR could improve these results. And another important point is that uh, non culprit vessels with relevant lesions by angiographic assessment and planned stage procedure were also excluded from our QFR and outcome analysis. Yes, these are the main limitations of our work. Yeah, and, and that is also why you think that you indicated that the results could be even stronger if performed, if performed online. So this was, of course, core lab analysis. If you do it online and, and with, say, the reasons that you just mentioned, you think that the results could be even stronger? Yes. The main reasons for um, angiographic exclusion were vessel overlapping, no suitable second projection, mm -hmm. suboptimal image quality. These are all reasons you can avoid easily and optimize the image quality in the CAS lab with the aim I will do a QFR analysis afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is also the question. Huh? How do you do this in an online situation? If uh, usually the patient comes in um, in the middle of the night, the 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 flow limiting lesion or the infarct uh, causing lesion is treated, and then I suppose you take a few other uh, views that you then analyze the next day to decide whether uh, the patient has to come back for a repeat. Um, revascularization using these these criteria is that how that works in um, in how that will work in daily practice yeah um, i would completely agree i think um, it's clear that the most important priority in the acute setting is the successful treatment of the acs causing culprit lesions without any um, complications and when the the unstable phase is finished um, you can use the final images that um, can be that were require, um, acquired in the recommended projections, and then you can perform exactly this pan-coronary functional assessment. And then you have so much more additional information for risk stratification and for more personalized and precise therapy. For example, you can plan the staged revascularization of the non carpet lesions, or you can adapt and extend the anti platelet therapy, for example, to protect those patients with culprit vessels at risk. Yeah. yeah. So, so that means that in, in your daily practice, you basically perform coronary physiology with QFR on all the vessels, whether it's in the in the, uh, the acute stage or maybe in non-acute situations also? Exactly. Since we know and you um, reported this in the beginning and since we studied the topic some months ago that QFR represents also a valid and stable way of coronary hemodynamic assessment in the context of ACS, we recommend and we do it to assess QFR in every lesion and in every vessel with the atherosclerotic lesion up to 30% for further planning the revascularization strategy. This is valuable since it is known that especially angio-based assessment of non-culprit lesions in the setting of ACS is quite challenging by systemic vasoconstriction, thrombus burden, and so on. And so for me, the panvascular assessment of ACS patients by QFR is really a big, huge, and important step to achieve precision therapy in acute coronary syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I mean, to be congratulations, uh, congratulated on such a great, uh, a great approach, a very uh, consistent and structured approach. And I think with that, you, you, you get the best results for for the patient and for yourself and for the department. And and uh, we have seen also in other studies that if you do it that way, you you save at at all levels in terms of um, uh, 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 the. Um, uh, Exposure time, the uh, the uh, exposure, uh, uh, what is it? The um, the X-ray radiation dose, uh, uh, the workflow, everything is really uh, you come to a win-win situation on all those uh, aspects. So I, I think that is um, a, a great approach, and um, I think a, a to be congratulated again on a very nice. Uh, publication uh, it, it will and has received uh, quite some attention 
and of course it also came in the, in the area or in the time of other major publications, this one plus uh, also the FAFA 3 China study then. So it has been uh, yeah, a, a week or weeks of, of great new publications in this field and uh, would like to thank you very much of course for all these efforts and, and look forward to, to more uh, publications from, from your side and then we, we can do subsequent uh, uh, interviews again. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a pleasure. Yeah. So with that, um, I think um, let me thank you again very much for for your time and efforts. And um, yeah, we look very much for for the future uh, 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 events and future publications. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. Bye.